Welcome to our lecture online. Now let's try the Laplacian in cylindrical coordinates. Again, we take a fairly simple function. Notice that's a scalar function because when we take the Laplacian, it's indeed on a scalar function, f. So here's the equation or the formula. Let's go ahead and run through it. I think we can do it all at once because I don't think it'll be that difficult. So the Laplacian of the scalar function is equal to one over rho times a partial derivative with respect to rho times or of rho times the partial derivative with respect to rho of our scalar function which is rho times the sine of phi. Now the reason why I wrote it out is because sometimes we kind of get lost in all that and it's better just to kind of write it out like this. Okay, now we have plus 1 over rho squared times the second partial derivative, so we take the first, actually, you know what? Yeah, let's just write it out like this, phi squared. Sometimes we can write it as the partial derivative of the partial derivative of the function, so it would be rho times the sine of phi, but we'll take care of it that way, plus the second partial derivative with respect to z of the scalar function, which is rho times the sine of phi. Okay, let's put parentheses around it like that. Okay, now let's work it out and see what we get. So here we take the partial derivative with respect to rho of rho times the sine of phi. So that's rho is the variable, this is the constant, so we simply get 1 over rho times the partial derivative with respect to phi of rho times the result of this, which is going to be the sine of phi. Okay, and let's put parentheses around it like this, plus 1 over rho squared times, okay, let's take the first derivative, so that leaves us with another derivative, phi, of the derivative with respect to this, now that's a constant, and the derivative of sine of phi with respect to phi, that'll be the cosine of phi, so this will be rho times the cosine of phi, okay, and then plus, now here we'll get zero, because there's no zero in here, so that's simply a zero for the third term. All right, now let's go ahead and take the partial derivative of this. So this is equal to, again, this is the variable, that's the constant. So we simply get 1 over rho times the derivative sign, which is the cosine of phi. Oh, wait a minute, wait, 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 no, 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 no. I'm getting away my, from myself here. It's, uh, that's the variable, that's the constant, so we simply get the sine of phi here, because that's constant when we take the partial derivative with respect to rho. Here we get plus 1 over rho squared times the partial derivative with respect to phi. So this is the variable, that's the constant. So we get rho times the derivative of this, which is the minus sine of phi. And of course, we get the plus 0. Simplifying this, we end up with 1 over rho times the sine of phi. And here we have a minus, and this cancels out one of those. So that's 1 over rho times the sine of phi. And look at that. Ah, we get the exact same thing in the two terms with so the minus sign, they cancel out, so we simply get zero. So in this case, the Laplacian of that particular scalar function is zero after we do all that work. That is how it's done.